So, uh, we have seen we, we have seen first order differential equations and we have looked at various methods to solve them. So, what we first the first method that we looked at was what was called separation of variables. Then we looked at uh, using the ideas of exact differentials to solve first order differential equations. After that we looked at how you can find integrating factors even when your first order differential equation cannot be separated or it is not exact you can use integrating factors to solve first order differential equations. So, today today I will talk about the system of first order differential equations and then I will talk about linear equations and how you can use matrix methods to solve linear first order differential equations or even a system of linear first order differential equations. Okay. So, so let us get to system of first order differential equations. So, the idea is the following suppose you have an one independent variable Well, let me call it uh, let me call it x and you have several dependent variables y1 y2 y3 etc okay then uh, your system of first order differential equation looks something like this so it might look like dy1 by dx is equal to f1 of uh, in general x y1 y2 some function so it is the derivative of the first dependent variable there's only one independent variable so so that's why i just have dy by dx you could have uh, then so this is one equation then you have dy2 by dx is it will be some other function f2 of x y1 y2 so on and so on you have all the way up to how many other variables you have so this is a system of first order differential equations so, so what you mean is it's not just one first order differential equation it's several first order differential equations and that is because you have several variables several dependent variables but you have only one independent variable Okay. So, this is a system of uh, first order differential equations okay. and uh, this is so something that we encounter very often. So, you might be you might remember your chemical kinetics in chemical kinetics we always we often have something like d a by d t is equal to something then you have d b by d t equal to something and so on. Okay. So, so uh, we often encounter such system of first order differential equations especially in chemical kinetics but also in several other areas you might encounter them. Okay. Now, uh, we look at a particular class of equations. Okay. Okay. So, we look at a particular class of equations called linear first order differential equations. Before that I will just mention one thing that, uh, that you can do something you can convert a higher order differential equation to first to a system of first order differential equations. So, example suppose you have a differential equation d square y by d x square is equal to let us say f of x y and uh, I will just say y prime. So, it is some function of x y and y prime this is a second derivative it is some function of x y and the first derivative of y. So, y prime is d y by d x. Okay. So, suppose you have a second order differential equation. Now, you can say let y 1 of x okay, equal to y of x and let y 2 of x equal to d y by d x this is a function of x. Okay. So, so, suppose you choose you use this substitution. Okay. So, then your system of equations uh, becomes so since y 2 is d y by d x I can write this equation in the following form. So, d y 1 by d x is equal to y 2 okay. and I can write d y 2 by d x Okay, d y 2 by d x is d square y by d x square. So, this is my f of x 
y1, this is y1, this is y2. Okay. So, so what I did as I converted my second order differential equation to two first order differential equations. Okay. So, I converted it to two first order differential equation. It is as though as though you can imagine that uh, x is the only uh, dependent variable and y1 and y2 are two, uh, two independent variables or, or, or x is the independent variable, y1 and y2 are two dependent variables and this has exactly the form that we had earlier. This has exactly this form. So, dy1 by dx is some function of all the all these variables, dy2 by dx is some function of all these variables. So, same way you have dy1 by dx, now in this case it depends only on y2, it does not depend on y1 or x, but uh, that is also fine. And then similarly you have dy2 by dx is some function of x, y1 and y2. So, so what this means is that you can convert a second order ODE into two first order ODEs. Okay, and uh, you can extend this. You can convert a third order ODE into three first order ODEs. Okay, and so on. You can do this for third order differential equations too. Okay, and you can extend it to any order. So basically, you can consider a you you can convert a higher order differential equation into first order differential into a system of first order differential equations. Okay. Now, let us look at uh, linear first order differential equations. So, a linear first order differential equation means uh, you, it looks how it has a form dy by dx is equal to some constant times y. So, each term has y up to power 1. Okay. Now, if you have this equation then uh, you can solve this. So, so, A is a constant. So, you can solve this linear first order differential equation by writing dy by y is equal to A dx or you can write uh, log of y is equal to A x plus a constant of integration or I can take exponential on both sides. I can write y is equal to e raise to A x into e raise to c and I can just call e raise to c as some constant d e raise to x. So, so d is an arbitrary constant. Okay. So, in other words uh, a linear first order differential equation the solution is exponential. So, solution of linear first order differential equation is an exponential function. Okay. So, uh, I will just write it here solution is an exponential function. Okay. Now, uh, if a is greater than 0, if a is greater than 0 then the solution is greater than 0 then, then it is exponentially increasing. So, so uh, for x greater than 0. So, for, for x greater than 0 it looks like this. Okay. So, along the positive x axis it looks like this. Now, when x is less than 0 okay, then it will it will just come all the way to 0. So, when x goes to minus infinity it will go to 0. So, you will have some function that looks like this. Okay. If a is greater than 0 uh, or, or if a is less than 0 okay, then you will have something which looks exactly the opposite way. So, it goes to infinity and then here it goes to 0. Okay. So, that is what your function looks like that is what the solution e raise to a x. So, this is a graph of e raise to a x this is also e raise to a x. So, uh, for a linear first order differential equation okay, with a constant coefficient okay, that has e raise to a x as the solution what happens if you have a system of linear first order differential equations. So, suppose I had d y 1 by d x is equal here. So, this is a 1 1 times y 1 plus a 1 2 times y 2 plus 
let us say let us say you go all the way up to a 1 n times y n. So, it is a and so, so y 1, y 2 etcetera up to y n are the dependent variables ok. And what I did is I wrote the differential equation for y 1 as some constant times y 1 plus some constant times y 2 plus all the all the way ok. So, this is a linear first order differential equation ok, it is linear for all these dependent variables. Similarly, if I have d y 2 by d x is equal to a 2 1 y 1 plus a 2 2 y 2 plus all the way up to a 2 n y n and you can go all the way to d y n by d x is equal to a n 1 times y 1 plus a n 2 times y 2 all the way up to a n n times y n. Okay. Now, this system of differential equations I can write it in a very nice form. So, I so will write this in the following form. So, I will make a column vector that looks like y 1, y 2 up to y n ok and I will take a I will take a d by d t of this d by d x of this that is basically I take uh, this is same as. Uh, the same as taking dy1 by dx, dy2 by dx and so on and I can write this using our matrix methods as a11, a12, a1n, a21, a22, a2n, an1, an2, ann this times y1 y 2 up to y n. So, what I have on the left hand side is a derivative with respect to x ok. So, so I do not have just the vector I have the derivative with respect to x. So, each term you have to take the derivative with respect to x and what I have on the right hand side is is just this matrix multiplied by y y 1 y 2 up to y n ok. So, so notice what I did is I converted this system of linear first order differential equations to something that looks like a matrix equation. So, now I can write this in a slightly different form. So, let me call this as y I will just say capital Y which is a vector ok and let me call this matrix A ok. So, then I can write d of y vector divided by d x which is the left hand side that I can write as a times y ok. Now, this looks just like a matrix equation this is a times y which is which is equal to d y by d x ok. So, how do you solve this differential equation? Now, uh, one of the things I had said when we discussed matrices is that one of the most powerful techniques in matrices is that of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors ok. So, suppose we find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a. of A. What do you mean by finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors? We look for for y lambda these eigenvectors such that A times y lambda is equal to lambda times y lambda ok. So, you are looking for vectors such that this is satisfied ok. Now, for these vectors, so therefore, we can immediately write d y lambda divided by d x is nothing but lambda times y lambda. So, why did I write this? Because uh, you look at this equation, this is just now suppose this suppose y was not a vector, then you would say d y by d x equal to lambda y the solution it is a it is a linear equation the solution is exponential. Okay. But now, now you notice that this is an eigenvalue lambda. So, for each of the each of the diff each of the each of the components of y ok you have a you have a linear equation ok. 
So, the solution okay, that means each of the components is satisfies an exponential equation. So, that means uh, I can say that uh, dy1 by dx equal to lambda y1 dy2 by dx equal to lambda y2 and so on. Okay. And the so and the solution of the, this I can write as y1 is equal to I will just call it uh, c1 e to the lambda x y2 equal to c2 e to the lambda x and so on. So, what that means is that I can write my y lambda as some coefficient vector I will just call it c times e to the lambda x okay, where c is basically a vector which has c1, c2 up to cn. Okay. So, so what we said is that this general equation okay, has if you, are, if you are able to find the eigenvalues then uh, this is one, one form y lambda equal to c e to the lambda x is one form that actually satisfies this uh, that actually uh, satisfies the differential equation. Okay. If y has n columns and a is an n by n matrix then you can have n eigenvalues Okay, so you can have n or n eigenvalues okay. in general yes it is correct that you can have n eigenvalues each of the coefficients of these eigenvalues will be seen here. Okay. So, so you can have n eigenvalues and you can have n eigenvectors and corresponding n eigenvectors ok. So, so uh, what is it that I want to get across here ok. So, if you know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors ok. So, so uh, then I should, I, should, I should write this slightly differently. So, so I will just put this in brackets. Okay. So, so what I want to say is the following that if you know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors okay, then you can write the solution of this differential equation. I okay. will just, I'll just emphasize this once again. So, remember y1 is nothing but a one of the coefficients of the eigenvectors okay. and uh, since you know y1 okay, you, can, uh, you, can, you can actually write the, write the general solution. So, let us, so what is the idea of this whole thing? So, you start with dy by dx, you write it as a times y, you solve for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors ok. Once you have solved for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors ok, then you know that you know that uh, any eigenvalue and eigenvector will have this as a solution ok. So, the solution can be written as some constant times e to the lambda x. Okay, that would be a solution of this differential equation. Okay, and uh, so 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 if you know the eigenvalues, you can solve the differential equation using this uh, matrix method. Okay, so what is the strategy? You have dy by dx equal to a times x, a times y. Okay, so this was your equation, and you get eigenvalues. Let's say lambda one, lambda two up to lambda n and you get the corresponding eigenvectors y1, y2 up to yn ok. And then you can write your you can write your solution your general solution Okay. Now, now what is a general solution? A general solution will have undetermined constants okay. and, uh, and uh, it is not hard to show that, that you can write the general solution as a linear combination of all these uh, eigenvalues multiplied by the eigenvectors. So, each term will look like y1 e to the lambda 1 x times c1 plus c2 times y2 e to the lambda 2 x plus c 3 times y 3 e to the lambda 3 x 
and so on. Where so, so general solution I will just write y is equal to this okay, where, where c1, c2 up to cn are arbitrary constants. to be determined from boundary conditions. So, so what did I do? I took this y and I wrote this as uh, let us just consider one of these terms. So, suppose I just consider y1 e to the lambda lambda 1 x. So, suppose I write uh, suppose I just look at y1 e to the lambda 1 x. Okay. Now, if I take the derivative of this with respect to uh, x, okay, so suppose I just take d by d x of this, you can clearly see that I will just get lambda times y 1 e to the lambda x. Okay. And, so, and so, this is just lambda times y and what we said this is equal to lambda times uh, y1 is just uh, so so each of these actually solves satisfies this differential equation because because you know that uh, uh, lambda 1 times y1 is just a times y1 so, and so what you are doing is you are using the method of eigenvalues and eigenvectors to actually get get independent solutions okay and then and then you are using uh, a times y1 e to the lambda 1 x okay so 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 therefore what you are saying is that y1 e to the lambda 1 x okay is a solution of this differential equation the original differential equation that you had similarly y2 e to the lambda 2 x is also a solution y3 e to the lambda 3 x is also a solution and so on okay and so you can take a linear combination of all these solutions and get a general solution of this differential equation that has lot of un arbitrary constants. Okay. Now, uh, each of these arbitrary constants you can de determine from the boundary conditions and so uh, this is a way to solve a system, uh, uh, a system of linear first order differential equations okay. and uh, using this idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, let us just go back once again and just uh, remind ourselves that uh, where we got this system of differential equations. We got it from saying that each of these differential equations is linear okay. and so and so I can write this in matrix form. So, so d by dx of y1 up to yn is, is this and, uh, and we identified each of these as uh, y dy by dx and this with matrix A and so we could write our differential equation in this form. This system of differential equation looks like a differential equation for a vector okay. and uh, once you find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors okay, then you can use these eigenvalues and eigenvectors in order to write the general solution. So, so, so what we have to do is to find these, eigen, find these eigenvectors and these eigenvectors satisfy this differential equation okay, because dy by dx is uh, is a y which is uh, which is a times y lambda which is lambda times y lambda and what that gives us is that d y lambda by d x is lambda times y lambda okay. And this immediately tells us that uh, y lambda should have this exponential factor. We can go ahead and write it as some constant times an exponential and what this tells us we have n eigenvalues and we have n eigenvectors. So, we can write the general solution in this form. Okay, so, we can write the general solution in this form and you can verify that uh, each of these terms okay, will satisfy the differential equation. Okay. So, each of these terms in the general solution, each of these terms will actually satisfy the differential equations. This concludes discussion on first order differential equations. Now, in the, in the last lecture of this module, I will be doing some practice problems to show you how you can use all these methods that you have learnt.